The title of this presentation is Mosaic Homoplasy or Evidence of Introgression, Australopithecines as a Hybrid Population by D. John Scott. Ever since the discovery of Australopithecus africanus in 1925, the genus Australopithecus has been largely considered a direct ancestor of the genus Homo, mainly due to evidence of habitual bipedality. And ever since the discovery of Australopithecus afarensis in 1974, Lucy's species in particular has been largely regarded as a potential direct ancestor of the genus Homo. In fact, if you look at these phylogenetic charts from the 1990s, you'll notice that afarensis is regarded as the most basal species in every single one of them, and yet no one can seem to agree on the exact placement of Africanus. As for how the Australopithecines became bipedal, the arboreal bipedality hypothesis has hominids first engaging in a form of branch-assisted bipedality in the trees, grasping branches above them with their hands and their feet on branches below. The arboreal quadrupedality hypothesis has ancient apes scurrying about in the trees on all fours, not unlike monkeys, as depicted here by the 25 million year old ape Proconsul Africanus, possible progenitor of the modern apes. The terrestrial quadrupedality hypothesis has the human lineage descending from digitigrade knuckle walkers, which would logically have to be the case if the common ancestor of the chimpanzees and the gorillas was a digitigrade knuckle walker just like they are. In the summer of 1998, Lee Berger and Henry McHenry published a paper demonstrating that Australopithecus afarensis was craniodentally more primitive or ape-like and postcranially more human-like than Australopithecus africanus, who was craniodentally uh, far more human-like, but postcranially had shorter legs and longer arms. This pattern was very similar to Homo habilis causing them to conclude that Australopithecus afarensis was postcranially far too human-like for her time and therefore not a direct ancestor of ours, whereas Australopithecus africanus was exactly what you would expect from an ancestor of Homo habilis. In 2000, Richmond and Strait concluded that early Australopithecines like Australopithecus anamensis and Australopithecus afarensis retained specializations in their wrists associated with digitigrade locomotion meaning we came from a knuckle-walking ancestor. Then in 2006, Patterson et al. argued that there was molecular evidence for a widespread hybridization event between the ancestors of humans and the ancestors of chimpanzees, roughly about 6 million years ago. That same year, Ackerman et al. demonstrated that hybrids between olive baboons and yellow baboons show increased morphological diversity compared to their unhybridized counterparts possibly explaining the morphological diversity in potentially hybridized populations of archaic humans. Then in 2009, Cavell and Schmidt argued that neither the last common ancestor of chimpanzees and humans, nor that lineage's ancestor with gorillas, was a knuckle walker. That digitigrade locomotion must have evolved independently in chimpanzees and in gorillas. Also in 2009, Artie was finally described. Closer to our common ancestor with chimpanzees than any of the Australopithecines were, Artipithecus rabidus scurried about in the trees on all fours like a monkey, though it was bipedal when it was on the ground. It had primitive, pomegranate hands, not unlike a monkey or a human, nowhere near as specialized as the digitigrade forelimbs of chimpanzees and gorillas and orangutans, seeming to confirm that we did not evolve from knuckle-walking apes. In 2012, Scali et al. observed that in 30% of the genome, gorilla is closer to human or chimpanzee than the latter are to each other, citing incomplete lineage sorting as the most probable explanation, and suggesting hybridization as another possible explanation, as Patterson had done six years prior. Although incomplete lineage sorting and hybridization can look very similar genetically, and phenotypically can both mimic convergent evolution. The only real way to tell the difference between the two is in the timing of the divergence. A more recent, yet-to-be peer-reviewed paper by Negrin suggests that the human and chimpanzee divergence was actually first triggered by intergression from the gorilla lineage. So, could the Australopithecines be a hybrid population? Why would the early Australopithecines show evidence of having evolved from a knuckle-walking ancestor when we can find no trace of that in our lineage before or after them? Same reason we see different divergence states for different parts of the human and chimpanzee genome. 